Hello world and welcome back. So I had to do a new video today because yesterday the incredible team at Blackmagic Design put out a new update for DaVinci Resolve. So it's now at version 18.1. Now this new version adds cool new audio features like voice isolation that removes background noise. This is a studio feature version only, but it's really cool. It also has dialogue leveler that kind of adjusts and levels out all your audio dialogue. But the really cool new thing that I really liked is this guy replacement tool. So let me show you how that works in DaVinci Resolve on the color page. I have a clip here. You can see I'm just flying around this guy in a video for a music video for kind of like Western style, as you can see. And if I zoom in, we have this obvious issue here. We have the airliner here in the background in the sky. Oftentimes, you might have a dull sky, it's not really much you can do about it. And um, instead, like before, where you had to add an alpha mat and bring in the sky and all this, now instead you have, if you go to the effects, now you have a sky replacement or effects node. Now, don't just drag it into your node like so, because it won't give you any extra alpha inputs and outputs. What you can do instead is you can either drag it to the area here and then, uh, if you click the node when it's blue, you can click it and remove it. Then you can connect the alpha inputs and alpha outputs to the final output like so. Or an easier thing to do is just drag the OFX directly onto your connector and let go and you're all set up and ready to go. Now in order for the sky replacement to work, you need to key out the sky and you do that in the node before. So in this node, I'm going to go to my selector tool down here. And then for this image, I'm going to select the 3D key here. And then I'm just gonna draw on my image like so. Until I get a pretty good selection. And then you can add selections by clicking the add to selection tool down here and Add some other notes and make sure you have a pretty good selection of the sky. Now you can make a whole video just about how you tweak and optimize your qualifiers and selectors, but uh, I'm not going to do that in this video. So I'm just going to do a little rough clean up here, clean the whites, clean the black. I can see I can clean the white or the blacks a little bit more and get rid of this line here so I can move that up a little bit. Like so, I can blur it a little bit and always like to add a little bit of denoise to the image and uh, yeah, like so, that's pretty good. All right, so now they have the sky qualified. We need to bring that qualification into the sky replacement node and you do that by dragging the alpha output of the qualifier into the alpha input of your sky replacement node. And then you select your sky replacement node. And here you have the option to again, refine it a little bit extra. So you can preview the mask like so. And then um, let's shift the edge here a little bit, maybe turn it, bring it in a little bit like so and refine the details. Now, obviously the more hard it is, the easier it is to, to refine and get a good key. But um, as I said, we're not gonna do too much refinement on this. But let's bring it down to something like this. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to turn the preview mask off and whoa, there's no sky. Well, you have underneath here, you have a selection for a source sky. If you brought in your own sky, you can tweak it here, but let's go to the artificial sky and let's have Black uh, Da Vinci do its thing itself. So we go into preview the artificial sky here and there's nothing, it's a black sky. Well, you have to turn up the opacity from zero to one. And now you can change the sky color and sky uh, the color of the sky and of the horizon if you want to warm it up or cool it down a little bit and you can tweak the softness so if you want to soften the 
horizon out a bit and you can change the height if you want to move it up and down you can do it here or if you want to change the angle of your sky you can do it here if that suits your image better so I'm going to turn the preview off now and you have the sky in the background that's cool but now the really cool stuff artificial clouds so again let's bring the opacity of the clouds up to one so we get to see all the clouds and uh, here you can scale the clouds so I'm gonna add in a little more clouds I'm not gonna make it too cloudy but a bit like that and the shape well let's see you kind of like work your way around and find out what looks best in your image um, da Vinci is not going to create the same things, same kind of clouds every time. So play around with it and see what you feel works best for your image. I need a little more detail, I think, like so. And for the fill, you, this is where you can decide how much cloud you want to fill out in the sky. I want to maybe bring it down a little bit, like so. Yeah, you can tweak the contrast that's really nice i like that and cloud time is how much cloud you have over time in your image so let's say that's a good starting point so let's keep that that's pretty good for now so the next item on the list here is hotspot brightness this is actually just a way of introducing a sun so if you turn it up to one you have a sun and in the parameters here you can tweak the position the size and the sharpness of the sun or if you want to do it manually you go down here to your toolbar and you choose open effects overlay and if I zoom out a little bit you can see here you can choose the brightness you can pick here and you can move it and you can click on the circle here and you can change the softness so that's just another way of adjusting the parameters you see over here but i'm not going to use that for this image so i'm going to turn that down to zero and then the next item we have here on the list is sky position that's really cool because normally you wouldn't have a sky in a fixed position if you move around with your camera it'd be nice with a little bit of movement so you get a little bit of parallax effect and a little more natural movement so what you do under the sky position is you can either keyframe it manually if you have something particularly you want keyframed or you can use a track of the original sky or use an fx tracker but instead i'm just going to do the simple track the foreground and let da vinci do his thing so click track foreground okay and once it's done you can scroll through your footage and you can see a subtle movement of the sky that it's kind of hard to see here maybe but you get the point it's tracking along with the foreground and moving along with the foreground so it looks a lot more integrated and a lot more natural and then here at the bottom you have foreground appearance this is where you can you can select your adjust foreground tab here and then you can um, do some basic color correction i probably wouldn't do it here but you can if you want to in this same note you can adjust the saturation temperature and tint and maybe warm it up a little bit uh, whatever you, you need to do and the last thing you have is global blend this is just a global opacity of the sky that you created but obviously if we bring that down we will reintroduce the plane up here in the sky so i'm going to keep that all the way up another smart tip now you see you have a very very long info tab here so you can press shift and f and you can zoom to fit and this will give you a much bigger um, uh, tab here and you can see everything and it's much easier for you to scroll around and see what's what's happening and what you can do so that's the sky replacement feature i'm sure i'm going to use it a lot i hope you liked this video and if you did please consider subscribing show us some love give us a little like and if there's something else you want us to make a video about just leave a comment below and we'll be happy to check it out now have a great day